guys and welcome to another episode in our Tribulation Soldier Comms YouTube and Facebook. And for those of you that don't know, my name is Pastor Stephen Burney and I'm the author of the Tribulation Soldier series. And today we're just adding in some new videos to our Tribulation Soldier Comms YouTube um, to populate it with various videos. And one of the really important ones I've really wanted to do has been my own personal testimony of salvation in Jesus Christ. And I think that this, it's quite a story, it's quite a difficult story. I'll try and be as brief as I can. But I just really hope that you know, there's people that can relate to the type of life that I was leading. As always guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit notifications. Loads and loads of videos to come. So, um, when I was young, guys, I, I was brought up in a really kind of tough street. You know, there was a, a bit of poverty there, a lot of alcoholism and all sorts of stuff, you know, fighting and you know, just all the sort of parts that go along with that. But I got to the stage when I was nine years old where I made a decision for Jesus. And, um, you know, I'd really turned him at this spectacular experience. What we call as Christians being filled with the Spirit, it was really quite something. You know, I really encountered God at such a young age. But when I came to I'm a teenage years, that was it really, you know, it was actually in a youth group at the time, which was really up close to our main high street, and that call of the pubs, you know, the, the nightclubs, the party, and you know, all that sort of stuff really started to take a hold. And I think one of the problems I had, especially at that point in time, was I was a very unhappy kid, and I was a very unhappy teenager as well. You wouldn't have thought it, you know, I was the joker, you know, I seemed to get home everybody, and... I don't think anybody really realised how sort of, you know, unhappy I was as a person, you know. But when the the nightclubs came across, you know, the clubbing, the, the, the drinking, the drugs and all that sort of stuff that goes along with it, you know, that seemed to fill that void. And of course with that, you know, it's always just a bandage. It's never the solution. But you know, as always, drinks are quick, quick fix, you know, a uh, womanising, quick fix, you know. And that, that was just something I needed, you know. And I got into a real cycle of that. You know, just kept going and going and going. And um, I suppose my main my main one was womanising. You know, I, I loved the women in all their different shapes and form, you know. And, and that's just what me and my mates did, you know. And of course, you know, it was fast cars and all these sorts of things, you know. And um, when it came to a certain point, I'd really just kind of had enough of it, you know. And I met Sharon, who I'm, I'm married to now. And... Um, quite a shame in a lot of ways because we did fall in love you know there's no question about that but we were both kind of broken people you know Sharon came from a, a pretty tough background she's got quite a testimony to share too especially about abuse and various things like that you know and um, but we were two broken people and very soon I was getting unhappy you know we moved in together but you know I, my life started turning back towards the, the nightclubs and the drinking and all that sort of things I think it was a local pub that was probably during that time was the you know the place I like to be and of course this caused huge problems between me and Sharon we really shouldn't have been together on paper I mean we argued all the time you know, our, our, our arguments were legendary and um, it was just such a tough few I mean we fell out we moved apart we got back together again it was just really really bad but um, you know there came a point when that was just it you know I we just couldn't really take any more and we broke up and uh, she went off to live by herself and I was I moved back home uh, with my parents and rented this place out and um, it just it just seemed like at that point in my life you know that everything was kind of falling away from her you know I had a lovely house you know I bought a house when I was really young and a great job fast cars brand new company car motorbikes all that sort of stuff the great circles of friends um, you know, I was always really popular and stuff like that, but I was so, so unhappy. And I think it came to a point, which was quite a turning point for me, when it was a really contemplated suicide. There was no question about it. And um, I was sitting up on the A9, which is a, a road that goes all the way through Scotland, upside Inverness. And um, I thought then, I thought, you know, let's do it. And it wasn't like this great panic or thinking of friends and family and all that sort of stuff. It was actually quite a peaceful decision and I thought I could just end this. I bet if I drove my car as fast as I could in oncoming traffic, some big lorry or something, it'd be lights out, it'd be painless and that'd be it. Even though I knew God was real, he, he didn't really come into mind at that time. But as I sat there on the edge of the A9, I just thought to myself, you know, if I had all that stuff back, 
I still wouldn't be happy. You could build me a million pound house and I still wouldn't be a happy person, you know. And it was then I really started to look back across my life. And when I saw Jesus and I remembered Jesus from that time, boy, I could just remember the peace, the security, the, just the happiness of being with God, being with Jesus, you know. And that's what I began to feel. And I thought it was me that had thought this up, but it was actually God. It was God drawing me back. And um, I just kept looking back over it all, you know. I had it all. But yet here I was, you know, my life was actually falling apart and oh, I was close to losing my job. I almost lost this house, you know. Obviously I'd lost Sharon. It was really, really bad at the time. But then God came along again. And of course, you know, at the time Sharon and I were living apart. But I didn't realise was that she was actually going to church. And she'd not only been going to church, but she'd been saved too. She'd given her life to the Lord and had a real experience, a real encounter with God. And um, it was then we really started drifting back together again. And of course, life was still a mess for us, really, you know, absolutely. But it was then I really rededicated myself to God. I wanted to be back with Him. It was just, it was all just right, it was all just good. All those years of partying and drinking and drugs and all that sort of stuff, you know, it was just, you know, it was just too much. It didn't give me what I needed, you know, but God could. So here we were, me, I think I, I moved back here, and um, Sharma's still living in her apartment, her flat, and um, about six six to nine months after that, that was about nine months actually, uh, we got married, got married again. But during that time before that, Sharon and I actually dated. Now, bearing in mind, we lived together for four years. You know, as, basically as man and wife, doing all the things uh, men and women do. And uh, here we were dating, where I was actually going up to the flat, knocking on the door, and we'd be having a date. Or we'd sit and chat, and see once all that other stuff was out of the way, all the other rubbish, all the other bits and pieces, we really, really got to know each other. We, I mean, we really did. And it was then, possibly, I'm absolutely sure of it actually, that we actually fell, fell in love. You know, that was the time we actually fell in love together. I think we did love each other before, you know, you can't stay around someone for four years without being, you know, having those kind of feelings. But God had transformed things. A little bit later that was us married. Now we were living together back in this house here. We were actually a family again. As time went on, our financial situation got better and better and better. We both got different jobs. We started actually being successful, actually being happy, and actually having a family. And that was our story. And in many respects, you know, I hope that many of you can relate to that sort of lifestyle. You know, that, that's who we were. I was brought up with that, you know, the fight and the drinking and all that sort of things. You know, when it came to pubs and clubs, you know, nobody parted like us. That's what I always kind of pushed across, you know. Had to take it to the extreme all the time with drinking and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Bad drugs and bits and pieces like that as well, which I'll share with you another time. During the, the years with Sharon, of course, there was a lot of uh, pubs, you know, loved the local pub. Uh, you know, we'd go in for a jar, you know, that's what I'd call a pint, and uh, play pool, you know, always had good mates and good friends there and stuff like that, you know. Sharon and I went to a, a lot of bike rallies, you know, motorbike rally weekends, Friday, Saturday night, and uh, you camp out, there's a band and drinking and all that sort of stuff, you know. Sharon was actually a backpatch biker at the time, part of a, a real MC. Um, so she she was quite heavily involved in that, and I kind of fell in with it as well. You know, so there was good memories, and as I always say about when I share a testimony like this, it's never against any of the friends or family I had at the time. You know, still extremely valued people in my life, but that lifestyle that I was leading, you know, it just it just wasn't for me. It was never ever going to make me happy. So when I turned back to God, He had to fix quite a lot of things. You know. During those years I've been away from God, I'd done a lot, I'd probably hurt a lot of people. Um, there was a lot of things that needed sorted out, you know, my mind straightened out, and that took a bit of time. And that happened through God challenging me to grow, to be different, you know, to move forward, be a real man. And obviously he was working away with Sharon as well, she had her own stuff to, to deal with, you know. But guys, God had turned everything around. And my hope in this little testimony here is that you don't see... Um, you know, some of the bits that, you know, we did as being spectacular or anything like that. I hope you see God. God, I gave my life to God when I was nine. He'd, he'd always been a part of my life. 
I turned away from them, I dumped them and went off to do the exact opposite. But still, 16 years later, after all that, he was just the same God he'd always been. You know, I never saw a huge difference in him. I got to know him more, but he was still the same God. And finally, finally, I was happy, you know. Of course, you know, guys, when you move into the Christian life, there's challenges. Of course there is. God wants us to grow. He wants to turn our lives around. You know, he wants to make things right for us. And that means going through some stuff sometimes. So, you know, when you give your life to God, yes, there is absolutely amazing things that happen. Huge encounters with him. You know, not just a belief system or faith. Real encounters with a real God. You can actually see him doing what he says in your life which is just phenomenal. You never feel alone. Maybe once or twice during some dark times, that's, that's no question. Um, but you never feel alone. And I can always remember that, I always remember saying to my pastor, you know, when Sharon and I got back together, and I'd given my life to the Lord, and I, said, I was living in the house again by myself. And I said to him, I said, you know, I, 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 you know, the house feels so different. Said, it's not you that feels, it's not the house that feels different, it's you. And it was. It was me that felt different. The place didn't feel empty. Just that presence. And it's something you really cannot put a price on. And of course, after that, you know, like I said, you know, you're not immune to things going wrong in life and, and whatnot, you know. And uh, we had a few things to deal with as time went on. Of course, one of my biggest was four years of being ill with ulcerative colitis and I, I got my large bowel removed. You know, but then on, you know, I became a youth pastor when I was two, in 2009, right till 2012, which were some of the greatest ministry years. You know, here I was being a youth pastor, you know, after what I was. Then I was an assistant pastor after that. And then um, I fell ill again with, with a surgery mistake. I was on a breathing machine. I took months to recover. I'm still recovering from PTSD and various things like that, you know. So it doesn't really make you immune. Our circumstances with that though, you know, the illnesses and some of the challenges, they're, they're fairly unique. If you're called to the ministry, you will experience more severe situations because God wants you to, to, to learn so much, you know. But all in all, I mean, it's just been absolutely tremendous, you know, from the, the life that I used to lead to what we are today. I think I would have been a drug addict and dead by now. I, I really do. I don't have any question about it in my mind. But here I am all those years later, 20 years later it is now. You know, our, our house, I've got my wife that I love, our marriage has never been better. Two wonderful kids here at home, 10 and 9, um, Emily and David, of course. And I never thought I'd ever be doing anything like this, you know. You go from being a bit of a muppet or a, a dummy, you know what I mean? Just waltzing through life, not doing anything to doing things you never ever thought you'd be capable of doing. So guys, this has been my testimony. This is just my testimony. That, and it's just scraping the surface, just a little look at um, you know where I've come from, what I've came up through, my experiences with God, you know, just some of the things God's done, some of the things God said. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, I could go on for days about the things God's done and the things that God said actual results that I've seen in my life. That is a life anyone can have, you know. I was just, I mean, if you were a really crude term, a loser, just an, I wouldn't have wanted my daughter to marry a guy like me for anything. I wasn't anything to look at at all. But it just doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter how bad everything may seem. You could be in serious addiction point of suicide, suicidal thoughts, all these things, God will come to you. I may well have been a generational Christian, parent, grandparents, great-grandparents going right back. That doesn't make any difference. I still walked away from God. If he will do that for me, he will do it for you. And this is what these testimonies are always about, is to try and show you guys just some of the things I've done, why I don't deserve any of this sort of stuff but also that the door is wide open for you. It is absolutely wide open. So yeah, Christian testimonies are extremely important. You know, many people can argue your beliefs or your knowledge, but actual experience, actual experience is actual experience. God is a God who is part of our daily lives and not just a belief system, but someone who is actually very present. 
you can see him in our lives, you can see him move through our lives. Sometimes you lose sight of that, but he's always there. And he always will be there for you. There's no question about it at all. You know, the Christian life isn't just a bed of roses all the time. It depends who you are, what you're called to do. Sometimes you can just lead a quiet and peaceable life with nothing really eventful happening. Other times you can have great challenges, really, really big ones. But in all these things, God's there. Now guys, I just want to say before I close this testimony that at the moment, at the time of filming this, the world is in a very, very strange place, you know. We went through COVID, we've got the Ukraine conflict, cost of living is sky high. It really, really is a very, very difficult time. And I just, I just want you to remember this testimony, remember about what God has said through me today, through my testimony, that he is there. This world is very, very uncertain. He is absolutely certain all the time. Every day, every week, every month, every year, he does not move in your life. It is tremendous and it doesn't matter what's happening out there. So yeah guys, listen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a little bit of a trial putting this together, you know, I really wanted to share this in as a simple a way as I possibly could, you know, I don't want to Christianify it, you know, uh, too many of the, the Christian words and stuff like that, you know. But I just really hope you've seen God through this testimony, that you've seen the kind of things that he's done in my life and Sharon's life, my family life, and in all the people around me as Christians. He's there, guys. He is absolutely there. God bless you guys. Again, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit notifications. Loads and loads of videos to come. Of course, we've got our Barney family YouTube channels where we do motorbike vlogs and Scottish tours and uh, caravan holidays, wild camping, fishing, all that sort of stuff. And we've also got three YouTube cha channels for kids. We've got our Barney Family Fun, Barney Family Fun Shorty Shorts, and Barney Family Fun Gaming. So guys, I just hope that uh, you, know, you really enjoy those social media channels that we have, which is around our Tribulation Soldier Epic series. But as always, guys, thank you so much for listening to me going on and on and on. God bless you.